Okay, so kicking off the update. So Google Tasks, you're probably familiar with Google Tasks because it's embedded in um, the Gmail interface, but it's also available in uh, chat spaces now as well. Just a minor, there's actually a couple of updates to Tasks. Uh, one of them is that you can now mark Tasks as important. So rather than just having a list of things that you need to do, now you have a list of things you need to do and things you really, really need to do with a little asterisk at the top. So that's just, that's gradually rolling out. There's another update to tasks that's coming up as well, we'll get into in a moment. Next up is definitely um, a, a feature for admins and it's to do with context aware access. Um, not sure if many people are using context aware access here, but what you have the ability to do now is essentially provide more information if they've been blocked from accessing their account. And so what will happen is you could perhaps provide a, um, a contact that they need to contact, somebody they need to contact. So when they get blocked, when they're trying to log in, perhaps there's a geographic block, um, it will provide an email address that they could contact and then to understand how they can get access to their account. Okay, so Google Chat Spaces has been um, updated quite a lot this year, and this just provides another way to grant access to um, or to open up your chat spaces. And what it is, it allows your controls to share um, links. So rather than inviting people to a chat space, you now have a URL that you can share with people, a little bit like a URL for a shared document, for example. But in this case, it's for a chat space. So it should make it a little bit easier for people to get in. I know in our Google technical community a few months ago when we were first getting it set up, you have to invite people, uninvite people, and then invite them again if they missed the invite. Uh, what you can actually do now is you can actually share a URL to the chat space directly so they can just click on that and then get access to that. I believe initially this is just gonna be for internal chat spaces within the organization. You won't be able to share those links to external um, chat spaces just yet. This is a big announcement. Well, it's a couple of weeks ago, actually. Transformation report. So Google has been um, running transformation reports on domains for several years now. It comes in two parts. So first part, it analyzes certain um, behavior activities on your Google domain, usage, and so on, and it provides that. And secondly, there is a survey that you can issue to staff to key stakeholders as well the what they've changed it a little bit this year now the survey is optional so you can actually just run the reports and get all of the data back about number of teachers number of active students and so on and much more so that's available from now and that will be um, open until july 26. every year there's two i think there's usually two windows in which you can run transformation reports but anyway, it's open right now if you want to check those out. Slide update to Google Drive. So now you have a bit more visibility on where files are located. So in addition to seeing um, the name of the file last edited and so on, you'll actually see there's a column now where you can see the location of the file as well. So perhaps you have two files which look similar, they have similar names. You actually be able to understand the difference between the two files by looking at the location of those files. And another um, update, a lot of people said this is really Google Drive catching up, catching up with Windows somewhat. And it is, of course, that you can now use uh, keyboard shortcuts to cut, copy, and paste files. And this is really good if you've got three or four files sitting in one folder, you want to move them to another folder. So rather than using the the uh, move button in the file options menu. You can now just cut them and paste them, or you can copy and paste them as well. And that's all with Google Drive on the web. Okay, um, client side encryption. I know, Charlie, do you want to mention anything about this? Yeah, I just, I mean, Google are increasing their support for the client, client side encryption. If you have a third party uh, encryption provider, you can now integrate that. Uh, it's one of the supported ones with the third party, the, the client side encryption for your docs, sheets and slides. It just adds an additional extra layer of security, possibly um, in most use cases for education, probably a little bit over the top. But if you have, um, you know, 
you know, a high level of security required by your organization, and it's something that you need to, um, you have some, maybe some local requirements to increase security. It might be something that you may need to consider. Um, so yeah, probably not much more to add than, than that, James. Yeah, I can imagine maybe a couple of US State Department schools, some of the embassy schools might be, might be customers for that. Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, this is a great update. So what you can do now on Google Sites is you can actually embed content as a full page. There's a couple of uses you could see for this, and they demonstrate using a Google Map for this. I actually thought another great use for this as well is using embedding a Data Studio report as a full page. So you have your Google Site and embed a Data, data Studio report. So rather than it being um, sort of within a window within the frame on the Google Site, now as soon as you click on that tab or that page, it would open up in, in full page. Okay, another good um, security update here, really, and making it easier to manage shared drives as well. So what you can do now is you can add shared drives to specific organization units. So for example, if you had a shared drive for the accounting staff and your accounting staff is in a specific organizational unit, then you could add a shared drive to that organizational unit and it would inherit the same um, sharing policies as well. Or you could set sharing policies specific to that organization unit. Um, it's just in beta at the moment, but if you click through, you should be able to click through on this and it will go through to details about the beta if you're interested in that. Um, I think probably this was this is well shared last month. Uh, very quickly, you can now select multiple um, batches of text within a document and you can update the formatting at once. And I think we mentioned a couple of minutes ago, but a couple of updates to Google Tasks. What you can do now from chat is you can actually add a task from Google Chat to your, to your personal task list. So if you receive a message, if I get a message from Dan Taylor, for example, asking me to check up on an Education Plus, I can just add that directly to my tasks without leaving the chat space or anything like that. Just make it easier to use tasks. Charlie, maybe bring you back in for this one. Outbound SAML responses. Yeah, so this is just um, a little update which allows you to include groups in SAML. Uh, if you're using, you need to set up the app intelligent agent for providing, uh, being a service provider for you, but you can include membership of groups. So it's a, it's a useful addition if you've been using things like, um, as I have been, I've been using things, fields like the the staff id or the um year or just some of the other attributes that are available but now being able to include group membership in saml responses will allow you to maybe do some more interesting things around making particular services available third party services available so um there's a bit of a setup that you need to do with it and it uses the app intelligent agent um but it's a useful addition if you want to say segment your users in a particular way for using third party applications that can consume that group ID. Great, thank you, Charlie. Dan, Dan Party just asked a question about tasks. I believe not, Dan. I think it just gets to your personal tasks unless you share that with somebody else. Okay, unless if it was a chat space and a chat space tasks are shared and you can assign them to different people in chat space. I think on this one, it's just gonna be to your to your task list. Okay, just a, a quick security update to Google Chat. You're now going to receive banners warning against potential phishing or malware from users with personal Google accounts. And then uh, AppSheet. So actually, AppSheet Enterprise actually comes with. Um, Education Plus. So if you have Education Plus already on your domain, then you actually have AppSheet Enterprise um, accounts already. AppSheet is Google's sort of no code platform, coding, um, app coding platform, and you can really do a lot with it. And it's great to be able to have access to it. So if you've got Education Plus, you automatically have access to AppSheet as well. A uh, quick question, I'm just, just sort of reaching out to everybody. Is anybody using AppSheet at the moment? Has anybody produced any apps with AppSheet? 
Khalid, we'll come back to you on that. Yeah, John, John, do you want to unmute and share maybe your use cases for AppSheet? Yeah, yeah, I'll not show my video because I'm in the middle of the office and there's people walking behind me. Yeah, we, we've uh, started uh, to try and replace some uh, expensive systems like our visitor check-in, which we pay uh, a lot of money for. Um, and it's really quite a simple check-in process, especially now COVID is, is sort of getting out of the way where somebody needs to check in. It's actually the example that one of the examples inside uh, the app sheet that Google have already made. So it's, it's quite cool. You can use it, uh, uh, copy it, and then sort of modify it to, to what you need. It's, it's, it's really quite easy uh, to, to create items and uh, it's it's powerful we're quite happy with it i think there are the trouble is it's one of those systems that you think oh great this is now just giving me lots of work um because there's so many cool little systems that you could sort of get rid of where they might have been run from a sheet before and the interface was maybe a bit painful because somebody overwrite to sell all the time and you want to be able to protect that bit there's some really cool stuff that you can do thank you john maybe you know maybe next call which will be during the summer we'll have to talk about the topic but John, maybe we could talk specifically about AppSheet as a topic during the next call. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, oh, thanks, Harry. That's that's a good idea. So login site maintenance issues. And uh, Sam, you asked, AppSheet is only for paid customers. Yes, AppSheet is a paid service, but you get it free if you have Education Plus. Okay, just moving on. Um, the log so BigQuery's um, data connection has received just a small update. So there's less, the, the delay is shorter on exporting your data. Should be about 10 minutes to export your data. Um, so just be a, a quicker feedback loop for getting your data out of Google. I feel like these classic Google Sites announcements have been going on for about seven or eight years now. <laughs> I'm sure it was in 2015, 16 when they first announced it. But here's another announcement. I'm sure this is the last one. If you're still running your classic Google Sites, um, you got until December the 1st this year. Hopefully, this is the last ever announcement. We'll see about this. Dan, yeah, Dan, just, yeah, your question, Dan, that's correct. You, I forget which packages on AppSheet you get for free with Education Plus. There are different levels of AppSheet. I think the AppSheet Enterprise is paid. AppSheet Standard is the one you get access to. I forget which one it is. We'll come back to that. Okay, okay. Um, there is now an API for adding, um, for creating spaces and adding members for Google Chat. That's in uh, developer preview. Again, you can, this is shared. This should be on the calendar invite. This will be shared later. So you can click through to details about that. Uh, you can now import um, custom themes in Google Sites. So if you have a custom theme on a Google site, you can now import that to another site. And I think actually that might have been mentioned last month. So I think we will uh, stop there with the updates.